Hi, welcome to today's video. Today, well, this video is going to be a little bit different from those that I normally do. It's still fountain pen related, so don't worry about that. But what I'm going to do is go through how I keep a record of the pens and the inks that I'm using. So join me now and let's take a deeper dive into the system that I use. When I started off with the fountain pens, it was really easy to know what I had. I only had a couple of pens and a couple of inks, so I didn't really have an issue. But as I've been collecting and gathering pens, it's getting harder and harder to know what ink is in what pen. To give you a rough idea, at the moment I've got about 70 pens and about 130 different inks, although a lot of those inks, they are samples. So what I needed is a way for me to be able to easily and simply know what was in each pen. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I do my pens in use each month. And there I list six pens and ink. And I use this. This is, this is Optic Paper by Oxford. I love this paper. It's really nice and fountain pen friendly. And I'm able to quite comfortably get all six on there. As well as doing that, I also have this little Tomai River paper notebook here. This was by Des Bandit and it's a B6 size. I also write on here the pens that I'm going to be using and the inks that are in them. Now why I do that is because this then fits in here. This is my Galen leather folio. It's A5 size. So all I do, I take my notepad and I pop it just behind the ink flap, I know this is really hard to show on camera when you're trying to hold everything. But anyway, that just slots in there. So I've always got that, so I always know what pens are there. And it's a nice emergency notebook as well. Obviously in here, there you can see, I've got my six pens and I've got my Rodeo notepad, which is what I'm using in here this month. Again, with the notepads, I do try and change them around a little bit. So, you know, this month's Rodeo, Next month, it could be Midori. The month after that, it could be just some cheap paper that I've got from the supermarket. I like to try loads of different papers and really play around to see how the pens work on them. So that's all well and good. That handles the six pens that I'm using that month. But I don't just have six pens inked up. I often have about 20 pens with inks in and they've all got different inks. Now, why I've got so many, when I do my first impressions videos, I don't like to go and clean out the pen. I like to leave that ink in there. And then over really a period of about two months, I use that pen and I may fill it up another couple of times, but that lets me spend the time using it and using it on different papers so I can get to know how the pen works, how the different inks work in that pen, which means I've got to then keep all 20 of them recorded. Now, yes, I could do that on pen and paper. I mean, I'm using a pen, I'm using a paper. It'd be simple, wouldn't it? And it is. But the problem I find with that, well, it just means that things, I'm not going to say messy, but when I change out the ink in a pen, that means I either have to rewrite the whole page or I've got pages there with crossing out. Um, and to be honest, I do not like that. It looks messy to me. My other passion, and to be honest, my lifelong passion is application development. That's what my background is. So I thought, Gary, why don't you write a little app to do that? Now, I did look on the Apple App Store, and yes, there are a few, but they didn't really do what I wanted. So I set about and I wrote an app. The app, strangely enough, is called Penlist. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to show you how I use it and what I do with it. This is the version as of the end of September in 2021. I am actively developing this. So it will change over time. The app is currently available for iPad, iPhones, and also for Macs. For the iPad and the iPhone, it needs to be a minimum of iOS 15 or iPadOS 15. For the Mac, it currently runs on macOS 11, but once macOS 12 is released, it will be updated. So it will require macOS 12 as a minimum. I'm going to now switch over to my iPad. I'm going to use the iPad version and take a look at the app, see what it does and see how I use it. So here we are on the iPad. What I've done is I've opened it up to the first page. 
As you can see here, it's showing you the pens that I've currently got inked. And these are my current live pens. And this is what I was saying. I do have quite a lot inked up at any one time. So I'll just scroll through again. I was going a little bit fast. So if I scroll through, you can see all the pens and the inks that are in them. So each of these cards, they're there to provide the information that you need. So at the top line, we've got the manufacturer. The line below that, that's the name of the pen. Below that is the size nib that's in it. Below that, we've got the name of the ink. We've got a button with various actions you can take. Then below that, the colored bit. This is something that's new in this release. What you can do is when you're entering an ink, you can put in the RGB, the red, green, blue values for the ink, and then it will display an approximate color of what that ink is. You know, it's not perfect. It doesn't take into account shading or how light or darkening case but it gives you a rough idea what the ink is like that you're going to be using so what we'll do is we'll take a look at some of the details so i'm going to click on actions to take that then gives me a menu here with pen details review finished and history pen details does what it says it shows you details about the pen we'll look at that in a second review well that lets me put a rating and review on that pen and ink combination Finished, that just lets you mark that pen and ink combination as being finished. If I'm putting the same ink back in the pen, I don't bother with that. I just let it carry on. Then history, that shows you all the pens and the inks that I've had in there. So I'm going to go and look at history first. I'm just going to tap on history. What that does, it goes away and looks at my database and it tells me what inks have been in this pen. This is where it's one of the advantages of a pen and paper. It makes it easy for me to find out when a particular ink has been in a certain pen. I find that quite useful, especially when I'm deciding what ink to put into the pen next. So I'll close out of that. We'll go and look at the pen details. So I'll go action to take. Select pen details. So here, this is where I put in the details about the pen. So the first line, that's the name of the pen. This is a name that I give it so that I can easily identify what the pen is. You know, I may have, for example, a number of the same pen, say a number of new moons. And by putting in the name, which is new moon dark rose, makes it easy for me to see and know which pen I'm talking about. I'll show you an example of that in another screen. Dark red, well, that's just some text I use to identify what the coloring of the pen is. The fine, this is where I can select the nib sizes. So if I click on that, I've got all these different options. I'm growing this list all the time. So that's an easy way to find out what's in the pen. Steel, these are the materials that the nib could be made from. Again, nice, easy way of being able to select it and know what's in it. So purchased, this tells me where I bought it from, when I bought it and how much I paid. So this particular pen was bought from AliExpress. It cost me $17.82. I bought it on the 24th of January of 2021. If it's a limited edition, which has got a number on, I can actually put in the serial number and then sold. If I decide to sell this pen, I can mark it as being sold and put in how much I sold it for. Going to click on photos. So in here, I can see any photos that I've taken of the pen and attached to the record. I can also add new photos to it. As we can see from the top here, I've got a picture of the nib and I've got a picture of the pen. So let me just click on the nib. I can then look at that picture in a bit more detail. And if I want to, I can actually save it to the photos app if I deleted it from my photo library and I wanted to use it. Just close out of this. The notes, there for what it says, if I want to put any particular notes about this pen. Let's close out back to that main window. So this is the my inked pens. But from the tab on the bottom, I'm now going to select uninked pens. So these are the pens, obviously, which aren't currently inked. So again, it's a very similar card. The only real difference is this doesn't show any details about an ink because there's nothing in there. Now, I'm just going to scroll down the screen a bit here and I've got the Jin Hao and I've got the 922s. Now, I've got a number of Jin Hao 922s. So this is where that name comes in useful. So I've got the name that I enter. So this first one I'm looking at here, I've got a Jin Hao 992 blue. So if I go to pen details, there we can see the pen details for that and close out of that. Then I can select the green version again down to pen details and there we have got the details the other thing that i can do on this screen is i can assign the inks so i'm going to use the Jin Hao. it should be 992 i'll have to go and rename them but i'm going to select the ink so i've clicked on actions to take and now i'm going to click on ink selection so this gives me two options. I can select the inks by color or I can select the inks by manufacturer. I've got to be honest, 99% of the time I use ink selection by manufacturer. So if I click on that, this now gives me a list of all the ink manufacturers that I've got in my database at the moment. I'm gonna go down to Diamine. 
click on Diamine, and now this is showing me a list of all the inks. It's a little bit of a quirk with iOS, depending whereabouts on the screen that the button is that you press. Sometimes this list will be alphabetical, sometimes it will be reverse alphabetical. It's something I'm looking at to see if I can work out how to fix it, but I've got to be honest, it's just the way that iOS works, so I'm not sure if there's anything I can do to get around this. But anyway, let's go and pick a colour. I fancy for this one, oh, let's go for a red dragon. It's a gorgeous red colour, it's red dragon. So I'm going to click on add red dragon and now it's disappeared from this screen because it's got an ink associated with it. If I jump back to the inked pens, then I'm going to go down till we get to Jinhao. We've got Jinhao 992 blue with diamine and red dragon. Again, click on action to take, click on finished, vanishes from this list and it appears back in the uninked list. So it's a way for me to easily and quickly add the inks that I'm using. Let's carry on going along that tab bar at the bottom, ink. So this is where I have the details about the inks. I've got two ways of sorting this. The default is to sort by manufacturer, but I can also sort it by color. So here we are by color, which is really nice if you're looking for a specific color. Let's go back to manufacturer and let's go down, let's stick with diamine. Let's go down to, shall we go Red Dragon? Here we go, Diamine Red Dragon. This is on the left hand side now. So again, you can see we've got Red Dragon, the color family group it's in, which is red, actions to take, and then we've got that bar showing the color or the rough approximation of the color. If I click on actions to take, again, I've got history, I've got finished, and I've got details. Let's look at history. So on history, you can see where I put it into the 922. So we've got today's date. You can now tell when I'm recording, but it's also in my Twisby Draco. Close out of that. Let's go and look at the details. So again, actions to take, details. So this again, very similar to the pens, but you don't need as much information. So where did I purchase it from? Colt Pens, I paid $4. I bought it on the 3rd of May and it's a bottle. Now here where we've got 58, this is what I've put in for what I call a location. For each of the ink bottles that I buy, I give it a unique number and that's essentially how I can quickly get to the ink and then I keep them in a box in numerical order so this bottle it's labeled 58 if I want to get this ink I just open the box look for the one with the sticky label on the top saying 58 and there's the ink it's simple but it works notes again so you can put free form notes in photos same as with the pen but just so you can see the photos of the ink what I'm thinking with this you may have ink swatches so it allows you to capture them let's close out of that down at the very bottom here, you can see this, it's like a colored bar. What I've done is for every ink that I have, if it's got a color associated with it, it will show it in this bar. So I get a real nice idea of the spread of colors that I've got. So looking at this, I've got loads and loads of blues and greens. I've got a few yellows. I've got some purples, but not that many. It's just a way of being able to quickly and easily see what color inks are there. And I find it's really interesting to look at, especially as I add new inks. So again, I'm just going to slowly stroll through here just so you can see how it goes. So we've got manufacturer name and then the list of inks. Back to the bottom tab, I'm going to click on manufacturers this time. So this shows everything I have based on a manufacturer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here. As you can see, these are everything in there at the moment. And I'm looking for down near the bottom. We'll get there eventually because I've got so much in here. And here we go, test manufacturer. This one's in there because although I do use a separate database when I'm writing my code, I like to be able to play around with it once I put it into the live environment. So this is what this is for. This allows me to test things out. So first one we're going to look at is test pen. So you can see it's saying it's a pen called test pen, and then it's got a button for the details. So if I click on details, this then again, it shows me details about the pen. So test pen, I can select various things. So here I can say, well, this one's a built-in vacuum, cap, body and grip. This lets me go into another screen where I can put in my sizes. This is there really for those people that like to have that technical detail. At the moment, I don't use it too often, but I think it's something that I will add in as I go on. Notes, again, tells you what it is, it's notes. And then current pens. This is where I keep a list of the pens for that manufacturer. If I click on test pen, so in here, I've now got my test pen and I can put in my details. So I can go and select a nib. So I'm going to say, let's give that a Kygaloo long knife. 
I'm going to say it's a titanium. I can put in the details of when I purchased it. So it is what it says. It's a list of all the pens. I'm going to save that, which should save them, and then close out. I'm going to close out again, back to that manufacturer screen. I'm going to ink this time. So we've got ink and testing. Click on details. So this is a slightly different screen. So this lets me put in what the ink is. So the top line, that's for the name of the ink. Here, I'm calling it testing. Ink family, that's for things like Pilot, where you've got a Shizuku. So you can record that, that it's all part of that one family. Select color. What I've tried to do is just come up with some very simple, rough color groupings. So I'm gonna say this one is brown. Color details, we've got a blank space at the moment, but if I go here to where it says decimal, I've got three numbers. That's for the RGB, the red, the green, and the blue. So what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna put in some numbers at random. So I'm going to put in 200, 30, 78, and that should be 30, not minus. And there is what that color is according to those numbers. If I change this one to 120, we've now got a different shade. But again, I'm going to change that 78 to 150. So this is how I put in the numbers. To get these numbers, it's a little bit fiddly, but there are a couple of good websites which can help you to get them. Below the decimal, I've got hex. Now you can only enter text in the decimal area, but what it then does is it converts that to what's called a hexadecimal number. And if you go and look on most websites, it gives you the hexadecimal number. Sometimes it gives you that digital number as well. So below this color details, I've now got notes again, very obvious, and then current inks. So this is saying for testing, but you could have a number of different types of ink with there. So if I click on that, I can see here that what I've actually got, I'm gonna say is a cartridge. So I may have a number of cartridges of that. I may really like it. So I'm gonna click add ink at stock. I'm gonna say it was purchased from somewhere. It cost me $9. And this time it's a bottle. I save that. There we go, it's added. So I'm just gonna save that to save them colors. We'll close out. Now, you can see this is updated. It's got that family name in there now, so Irishazook, can't spell today. And it's also showing the color. So it's just, again, a nice, easy way to update and see what's happening. The final one we're going to look at for test manufacturer is notepads. If I click on the details, this fetches me up the details for the notepad. I'm still working on this. It's there, it does work but it's something I'm not sure how I want it to go at the moment because how it's working, it's not really adding too much value to me. So it's something I'm working on and looking at how I can improve this. But it's very similar to the ink. You know, we've got the name of the pad and then we've got our stock details. Let's close out of that. So going along the bottom again, we've now got notepads. So this is just showing the notepads that are in there. As I say, it's something I'm working on. The last tab, to buy. This one's the really interesting one. This is the one I actually spend quite a bit of time in. As I see pens and inks that I want, well then I add them to my to buy list. Yes, I know, again, could do this on pen and paper really easy, but I've got a system, so I just use it in here. So let me go down. As we can see, there's quite a few entries. At the very top, I can filter by the type, so I can say, do I want to look at pens, inks, notebooks, or other? So if I want to just look at pens, this is a list of all the pens I'd like. Inks, list of inks, notepads, and then other. I don't think there's anything in there. No, there's nothing in there at the moment. So I'm going to go back to pen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new pen. So let's go down first so I can show you what we've got. I'm looking for that test one again. So as we can see, there's no entries in here at all for the test manufacturer. So I've seen a pen that I want from the test manufacturer. I'm going to click add, it shows me a new screen. So I can select the type, is it a pen, ink or notebook? This is a pen. I can next select the manufacturer. So again, I just find it in the list. Test manufacturer, there we go, name. So this is the name of the pen. I'm gonna call this a gorgeous test pen. Now I'm typing using an Apple keyboard. If you don't have a keyboard attached, you'll just get the on-screen keyboard. Where from? Just click in there, just pop up here. So here's the on-screen keyboard, just so you can see it. So where from, I'm gonna say, Shop of Excellence. And roughly, how much is it gonna cost? Well, it's gonna cost me $89. 
I've got some states here so I can see what's going on. Is it planned? Have I ordered it? Have I bought it? And if I click on save, that's now saved to the database. Close out of there. Here we go, going down. Test manufacturer, and we can see the gorgeous test pen. So the same works with the inks, same, and the notepads and the other. So now I've been, and I've bought this pen. What I can do is that I can come into my list here and I can click on actions to take. Three options. Details, will show you the screen we've just looked at. Remove, but well, I don't want it. I'm no longer interested in buying this. So I just remove it from the list. Mark has bought. This is the interesting one. It removes it from this list, but it will also go away and create the pen entries. So let me just do that. Mark has bought. So bang, it's gone. So it's disappeared from the list. If I go to manufacturers, and then go down to my test manufacturer. It's a long way down the list, isn't it? You can now see I've got another pen in here. Gorgeous test pen. Click on details. There's a details about it. And we can see it's created a pen entry. If I go over unink pens. Again, let's go down the list. Test manufacturer. We've got gorgeous test pen. And I can go and look at the details in there. And there's the details about it, which I can then complete. So this is a very quick run through of the app. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting. I'd love to know how do you keep a record of what ink is in which pen? Which pens you've got? Which inks you've got? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button. Give the video a like. The more people like and comment on the video, helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.